Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Christine and my channel is Calico and I talk about cross stitching among other things, but this video is going to be about cross stitching. Uh, it's January 31st, so the end of the month already, 2020, and we got one month behind us already, so that's good. It went by super fast, as usual. I had intended on not making a floss tube video for a while and about five minutes ago I decided I was going to because I don't have a whole lot to show so it won't be a real long video and that just makes it sort of doable so instead of waiting for it to be really long I thought I would check in and show you what I've been doing this month which is easy because I've only been working on one project. Um, let's see, so the last video was, I think I did in December, and I had mentioned that my new start for the new year was going to be Balloon Glow by Dimensions. Hold on while I grab that. Most everybody probably knows what this looks like already, but in case it's the case you're new and um, have never seen it, this is it. So um, I have a stitch along going, but as of right now, there's only me and one other person, which is fine. Anybody else can join in at any time. If you have this in your uh, stash, if you have it that you've um, already started or maybe you want to start it, just jump in anytime. There's no rules. Just um, you can just hashtag it. I think it's just balloon glow sal is what it is over on Instagram. And so far, it's just um, me and my friend Kim that are stitching it and we are having a good time we're both uh, working away on it we both started in the center and it's been a while since I've started a project in the center I uh, usually um, because I tend to like to start up at the upper left and just you know work sort of to the right and down kind of like how you read you know and, and my stitches seem to flow better when I do that but um, this time since I started it on New Year's Eve at about just a little bit after midnight and I hadn't really prepared anything, so I thought, you know what, I don't want to do some weird calculation where I don't get my edges or leave myself enough edges or something. So I thought I better just be safe to start in the center. So I did. Started there. And um, you have probably already know where I'm at on this because I uploaded maybe about a week ago or so. I uploaded a backstitching video of just the section. Well, I'll just go ahead and show you. So of, you know, the house section right here. So... And I just took it off the hoop, so that's why the hoop marks are on it. And the Ada is kind of stiff. I'm just using the Ada that came with the kit, and I believe it's an 18 count. Yeah, 18 count ivory Ada. And so when I did my when I did my back stitching video, I had just back stitched basically these houses here, the houses in the barn. Um, the balloon had already been back stitched. So, because I did that, I really like to backstitch these as I go, these dimensions kits. Sometimes if you wait to do it at the end, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I just decided to go ahead and, and do that as I go along. So since that video, I think I did a little bit more down in this area, and then I worked all the way over to the edge. So this over here is now the left edge. That's where the pattern stops. So what am I going to do with it up to this point? Um... I think I'm going to, I was tempted to go up and do some of the sky area there because it's got some different colors from green, but I'm also tempted to go down and just sort of finish, find where the corner is down here and sort of maybe outline that and work a little bit more in that area. But I was only going to work on this till the end of the month and I thought, well, maybe uh, work on it till the end of January and then maybe switch out another project. I hadn't really made any specific plans of what I'm going to do with my stitching this year. I sort of have a loose plan of maybe taking just working on one of my old whips for a month at a time. So kind of like what I did with Stitch Mania where I took out my old, took out a project and I worked on it for a day or so and then put it back in. I thought, gee, what if I, you know, just took out one project and worked on one single project for a month because this is, I would say, really significant progress for one month of stitching. Um, yeah, I mean, if I did that, if I pulled out each one of my old whips, I mean, some of them, some of the whips I have, you know, this would make significant progress if I were to do that. So, uh, I don't know. So, tomorrow's February 1st, and I haven't decided if I'm going to continue with this, because I really am enjoying this project, and I might want to continue going 
a little bit further on it, but I might just go pick one of my other whips in my stash. And, and, and in case you're new to the terminology, whip stands for works in progress. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where I go. We'll see when I wake up tomorrow what I feel like doing. Um, I don't have, I'm going to insert, well, okay, no, I'm not going to insert that clip now. I'm just going to show you, uh, I don't really have much more to say. I bought three things, I think only three, and actually technically four things because I forgot to show you this in my last video. Um, this kit here um, called Scenic Farm by Dimensions is a kit that I have wanted. It was my unicorn chart basically for a long time. I wanted it wanted this chart so bad and it was out of print and I always was looking for it online. I was always looking for it to go, you know, be a decent price online. And then back, maybe it was in November, I had posted a picture on, on Instagram. I had actually found it online. Yeah, I think it was back in November. Somebody was selling it for a reasonable price, a price that I was like, okay, yeah, I can, I can, I can pay that. That's not, you know, <laughs> It's not going to break the bank to buy that, but it was a chart I really wanted. I was so excited. And then I posted it on Instagram and everybody's like, oh yeah, I got mine too. And oh, I pre-ordered mine. I can't wait till I get mine. I was like, what is everybody talking about? I thought this was rare and out of print. And sure enough, I did a little research and realized that Dimensions, what do you call it? Reprinted it, re-released it again. And that it was available for pre-order and it was going to be available at the beginning of the year again. So... I was like, hmm, okay, so I had one of the original old kits that was for sale, you know, one of the original ones that didn't have the floss sorted, and I thought, you know, I would rather have, I like the kind that have the, these floss cards, you know, the newer Dimensions kits that come with the floss all organized, and plus I think that the quality of floss is a little bit better in the newer kits than it is in those older kits, and so what I did is I went around and turned turned around and sold mine online again for the exact same price that I bought it for. So it was just a an even deal. And then I ended up pre-ordering and getting one of the new ones. So I'm so excited about this. So yeah, I you know, I hope that the colors are as nice as they were in that old original kit. Part of me was thinking, oh, maybe I should have kept that original one, but Anyway, it doesn't matter. I love this kit and I will like to start that soon. And then um, another kit I found online that was uh, one that I've been looking for for a while and I was excited to find is this one right here, this little Dimensions Gold kit and it's called Flowers and Hummingbird. And I actually hadn't really thought that I wanted this one until I saw Luda, again, because she always enables me to <laughs> buy these kids. She had stitched this on her channel, and I loved the way it turned out. I loved it. So then I've been on the search for it, and I was able to find it. So these are what the colors look like um, with that, and I'm excited to start that. And last but not least, I found this kit online, another Margelin Bastin one that I, uh, by Lenart, that I really 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 love and um, I've been looking for it for a while and it showed up and it's actually the kit not just the pattern so I was really excited to get this and I can't wait to start it so yeah I'm really tempted to start something new part of me says oh I should work on my old kits but part of me really wants to start one of these new spring kits too so and then the very last thing that I bought is I found this new Mill Hill kit that came out and I'm going to insert a clip about it so that I don't repeat what I'm going to say, but I had to have this and I'll insert that clip now because I'm going to substitute some floss. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop in and show you that I'm so excited when I saw this new Mill Hill kit that came out that's got these cute little roller skates on it and I don't know if you remember I don't know if you follow me on Instagram because I don't think I ever mentioned it on my uh, floss tube channel that I just this last summer bought a pair of skates again because my both my boys were really into roller skating and they wanted me to go and I said that I wasn't going to do roller blades because I have tried that and I thought you know if I go roller skating again I'm going to get me some old school quad skates and so I found these and I made these pom-poms for them absolutely loved it 
And then I just noticed that Mill Hill just came out with this cute little ornament with the roller skates. So I bought it, and actually when I got it, I thought the, the uh, wheels were pink because they kind of look like that. Actually, I'm going to set you down here. Um, but the floss that it comes with is sort of a red color. And I thought that I would substitute the red for some pink that sort of matches the wheels on my on my skates. So I have my floss container here. This is all of the DMC colors. So you can see that I'm zoning in right there on those pinks, right in that area there, because they look like uh, so far with in these other colors that I'm thinking those colors look like they match the best. So here, let me set you down here again. And right away I'm looking at that one and that seems to match pretty nicely. So we'll keep that as a contender. Um, I think I'm going to need a darker one too, so I don't know, I'm th thinking maybe those might match. Actually that one might match better. Anyway, I just... Uh, thought that would be fun to try and find some substitutes. Let me flip this over because I know there's more pinks on the other side. And let's see, I'll tilt you down again. You can see there's some, these are probably a little bit more fuchsia colored, but here's, this one might be a contender. Uh, that's looking pretty good too. So, yeah, any of those would do. I'm kind of liking this one. It's a nice hot pink. When I don't have the camera on, I'll look at them a little bit more closely and decide because I have to pick. It looks like from this, you can see there's a dark red and sort of a medium red in there. So I'll probably need a dark and a medium pink. And then I was thinking it would be really fun when I'm all done to... Uh, get some floss like some white and the couple of shades of pink and make a tiny little pom pom like two tiny little pom poms to stick on there. Wouldn't that look cute? I can make them out of like just the embroidery floss and stick them on as a nice embellishment. So that's my plan. We'll see if I can manage something like that. But I just thought those were so cute. Okay, so yeah, um, I'm excited about that and. I really, oh, there's one last thing. This is sort of cross-stitching related, but sort of not. Um, I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to flip you around because I just want to show you this cool little thing I bought at Walmart that um, made me organize my little stitchy spot here a little bit better. So uh, hold on, I'll flip you around and do that. All right, guys, I just wanted to quickly turn around and show you this little organizer I found just in the office section at Walmart and I was looking for something because I have this this little table next to me that's just it gets so messy and I just needed a way to organize it and so actually when you buy it what it has in it is this little it has like this little plastic organizer here for paper clips and stuff but I took that out and decided to put in my little uh, pin cushion there and it's kind of cool because it's metal, so of course you can hang your needle minders, which I haven't added all mine yet because I have a whole bunch of them upstairs that I still need to add. But um, yeah, you know, you can keep your little needle minders there for when you need them. And then, you know, I got my little, I keep my scissors here and with me, you can hang the little scissor fob out there so you can grab them. Um, yes, I also have a pair of scissors like this that I use. Um, a lot of times because sometimes these little ones are uh, just a little too tiny and sharp. But I've got my highlighters here. Highlighters and pins for marking on my, uh, what do you call those little bobbins? A uh, place for my lotion, which this isn't the lotion that I use when I stitch because it's too greasy on my hands. But I just wanted to put that there to show you that that's where I usually keep my lotion that I that I that that's safe for, you know, stitching. These are little clippies that I use to cl clip my fabric back when the, it's in the hoops and then um, down this little drawer. I just keep some highlighters and some extra bobbins, but you can put all kinds of stuff in here depending on what you like to use while you stitch because I've got this compartment right back here that doesn't have anything in it yet. So you can keep like maybe your little magnifier or your 
I don't know, um, what are some other things I like to use when I stitch that I don't have with me here? But anyway, yeah, I just thought this was cute. Just a little, uh, just found it right there at the um, Walmart office section. So you might like to get yourself something like that too. All right, guys. Yeah, yes, it's nice because I get my my spot over here since it's in our living room looks um, finally kind of neat. Okay, <laughs> just thought I'd share. All right, bye. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it. That's all I have to say. I hope everybody's doing good and getting some stitching time in. I feel like there's not anything else I need to say, but I'm glad that I did get this recorded. Um, oh yeah, I was going to show you my paint by numbers too. Maybe I'll do that. Well, okay. I didn't get them framed yet, but yes, if you've been seeing my paint by numbers, maybe that doesn't interest you at all. I have been making some videos of my paint by numbers, but um, yeah, maybe I'll go grab those and show those what they look like. And Okay, so I went and grabbed my paint by numbers because I completely forgot that I was going to show that to you and I would have liked to have had them framed before I showed them to you, but I just, I'm the world's worst framer. I just cannot bring myself to go find frames. I just don't like to do that, but I will do that. So this, I know you've seen it on, posted on Instagram and you've actually seen a, if, if you were interested, you might have watched my video that has some time lapse and me talking about this paint by number, but I just wanted to show you that this is how it looks. So it's kind of gives you sort of the size of it too, which, I just love this so much. It's so cute. That little baby bird right there, so cute. So yes, there's that one that I did. And then I finished my second one. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna show that first one I did because that one's just, I don't know, it was kind of cheesy. Yeah, I'm not even going to show that one. <laughs> anyway, this one, guys. Look at this. did not that turn out nice? You know me and eagles, too. Anyway, that's how that one turned out. I love it. I can't wait to get that one framed. And then I have one that I'm getting ready to start. I was all ready to start it. And then I got really busy and I haven't put any paint in it yet. But this is what it's going to look like. So this is the box. It's a Dimensions Paint Works. It's going to look like this. And I just trimmed out the little picture because I keep that next to the painting. But um, yes, this one's called Lakeside Morning. And I love it. I can't wait to start it. So I'm just loving paint by numbers. It was like, I love to paint. I don't know anything about painting. So this kind of is a way to make somebody like me feel like I can create a masterpiece. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. And like I said, if you have more interest in the paint by numbers or want to hear more about them, I have a whole separate playlist of those on there. So, okay, guys, that is it. I hope you all have a wonderful February and maybe, just maybe, I will check in again at the end of February, which this year is a leap year, so maybe February 29th. All right, guys, happy stitching. Talk to you later. Bye.